Bob's. Show me Bob's on Keys. This is BobKeys.com. We are working with them to bring you an additional 25% off on products like Windows 10 Pro. Use coupon code TS25 and you're going to save 25% off the already good price of $18.08, bringing it down by another $4.50. You can save money on Windows 10 Home and also 25% off as well with Office 2019. Now, once you get your key, it'll appear in your account. Just copy that. Hit start and type activation and activation settings will come up. Click on change product key and then paste your product key here. Or if it's that's not there, it may just say add product key or update product key if you have not already activated. Just paste it in there and then you will fully be able to use Windows 10. Thanks to bobkeys.com. And now to our regularly scheduled program. Let's talk about streaming setups for Twitch, why don't we? Because I've got a better setup than most people out there. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I have. We're going to talk about every single piece and how it's improved my life. You should buy everything you see in this video because it is what I have decided is the perfect and most complete setup for streaming to Twitch. Is Mixer still a thing? Or Hitbox? Is that still a thing? So this is my professional set right here. It's where I do all the, you know, the tech videos. And I think we should go up and hang out at the other set and do this video at the streaming setup. Welcome to my lair. So I usually do these in black and white because I like to keep the lights a little bit low so that I can stream for a long time and not get a lot of glare headaches. So I've got these Elgato lights and I like to keep it black and white because during low light, you can usually see a lot of grain. Then if the color's not perfect, it can look kind of weird. So I much prefer black and white. Plus it gives me that, that mood, that ambiance. Now we're gonna go through all the hardware I'm using in this video. And if you wanna see some of my nerd stuff, like all my paraphernalia, different thing, lunch boxes and video games and whatever's on the shelf over there, DOS games and Windows games and stuff like that. And uh, the first thing I got is this green screen. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna show this in the video or not. I may have to do a separate video where I goof off with the green screen, but I thought I was getting the one that was on the floor. Ended up uh, accidentally getting the one that hangs from the ceiling. And on the ceiling in here, I have a large halogen light. It's kind of a bad situation, so I can't really mount it correctly. I can maybe drop a chain and hang it a little bit lower, but it is a very nice, substantial green screen for a good price. And I like the fact that it comes with all the mounting stuff that you need. Now, I've always liked pancake lights. Those are those really thin LED lights that are nice and soft. You want a soft glow because if you have like a, if you just put like a light bulb on the side of your you know, monitor or whatever, or a lamp or something, it's not going to be soft. It's going to be harsh. And the size of the light source will determine the harshness of the shadows. So if you get like a really, really, really big light source, then the shadows are going to be more gradual, as in you're, you're not going to see like hard lines of, of, of like dark shadows and then harsh lines over on the other side of like really bright, uh, washed out you know, just light. And that's what I like with these Elgato lights is they're soft. So the Elgato key lights that we have right here, they're 1400 lumens and you can control everything very easily with this app. I'm gonna go ahead and start moving some of the light around. I'm gonna make it really bright on one side. Ah, oh, looking into the sun. It's too bright. So they can get really bright. So if you wanted to have like a professional broadcast or something like that, where you where you need like super bright lights, or even if you're sitting by a window and you're competing with the daytime sunlight, which you should probably close that window and put some blackout curtains on it. But if you really wanted to, you could um, compete with the outdoor light because they're that bright. I really recommend those. Now I know there's some different competing brands and stuff out there. And I've even seen some people take LED light strips and try to use cardboard to make um, their own version of this. And that can work in a pinch if you do not have the budget for it. But um, but if you want something that's going to give you a lot of light and a lot of color gradation because you can change the, the temperature of the color as well, make it nice and blue and cool, or you can make it warm, like kind of an orange, however you like. So I like these because, you know, it's professional quality. They have really nice stands and they're just going to get the job done. Also have a nice little ball mount mechanism on the back so you can swivel them uh, and get them in just the right spot. Plus the stand will allow you to raise them and lower them. You see here how they're constructed with all these diffusers to really give you that nice soft light. I'm using the Elgato multi-mount for my camera. Right now my camera is a little bit too high. It's kind of uh, got to come up a little bit like this. 
I was actually adjusting it to mess around and right now it's pretty warm in here. So I'm gonna have to wait and wait for it to get cooler in the house before I can lower that because the one thing I noticed about this is that it can get kind of stiff if your room is above 70 degrees, 72 degrees, somewhere in that range. So it's a little warm in here because of the computer and it's also, I'm in like a closet right now, all right? So I will wait till it's a little cooler, then lower it back down. I'm just gonna do this video with it a little bit too high, but you have a lot of adjustments on this. Plus the top of this has a ball mount, so you can swivel it just the way you like it. If you wanna tilt your camera forward or back or however you like it, it's very easy to do. And you can really raise this up, uh, and it also comes with a nice clamping desk mount. It goes from 55 centimeters all the way up to 125 centimeters, and if you're in that one weird country that I'm in, 22 inches to 49 inches, that's the the height that you can adjust it. Now on top of that, I put my Sony RX10. It's not a digital SLR, and it's got a quarter inch sensor, which is not quite as big as the APS-C sensors, and certainly not as big as like a full size sensor or anything like that. So it doesn't give me the crazy background blur, but it gives me a nice range of focus that I can move around with. I may end up upgrading this to a full frame sensor, but then if I move like this in my chair, I'll go out of focus. With this camera, I have a decent enough uh, range of focus since it has that who the hell is that? But now I can like lean back like this and I still should be, you know, in focus with this camera. Now I've got this hooked up to a little Magewell USB uh, Gen 2 USB 3, you know, capture thing. It's like a 1080p capture device and it's just fine for this. I think for gaming what I'm going to do is switch over to this. This is the Cloner Alliance Flint 4K Plus and I like this because it has a pass-through and it's USB-C. It's also got microphone line in and a line out. So this has more options. You know, and then if you wanted to go really qu crazy and do some like picture in picture, also got this one. I'll be doing a video on these pretty soon. These Cloner Alliance pro uh, products right here. You know, after the Elgato stuff, one of the most important things is well, the monitor, but the desk. So I wanted a nice, clean, simple desk without a lot of nonsense. Uh, I didn't really want any drawers. I've got shelves and stuff for, for everything I need. I'm, I'm picky about my uh, desks and I like a good wooden desk. So I actually found a place in town that had some Douglas fir that was reclaimed from a building. I know I'm a hipster because I like reclaimed wood. But anyway, Douglas fir is extremely difficult to get now, especially like these old growth Douglas firs and stuff like that. So I've got uh, I got that and had him put four metal legs on it. Just really simple and, and, and elegant and clean. It's a nice wide desk, so I'm, I'm quite happy with it. So Pixio and Asus and Adele walk into a bar. I've got a very strange assortment of monitors right here. The most important piece maybe on this entire desk is the Pixio PXC32, a 32 inch, 144 hertz, and it has a slight curvature of 1800 R. It's not a lot. Just a very slight curvature. Normally I don't really like curved monitors. I usually like to game on a 27 inch 1440p. But after trying this monitor with the slight curve being 32 inches, I found that I actually have really good aim here. And when I normally get to the bigger monitors, it's hard for me to tell what's going on, I'm sitting a couple feet away, so it's hard to see what's going on. But with this one with a slight curve, I can still keep up with everything that's going on, plus it's a little bigger. And it's a slight curve of 1800R, so it doesn't even, I forget that it's even curved. So it's a VA panel, which gives you a nice deep black. It's maybe not quite as vibrant as an IPS, but I, I love this panel. You're not going to get it from me. It also has a free sync and uh, some on-screen toggles for cursors and stuff like that that I don't use. I don't even use free sync because 144 hertz is plenty for me. I just leave it off and use it as it is. Then over on my left, I like to have a vertical monitor. It's just easy to stack, you know, like windows and chats and all kinds of stuff like that over on my vertical monitor. So I'm using a Dell Professional P. It's actually the 2211H, which is a few years older. This is just the updated model, the one they're selling right now. And I got this for 10 or 15 bucks from a guy who met me wearing hospital scrubs one day. And I was like, did you come out of the COVID ward? And he's like, no, man, we're, we're good. And I was like, all right. And my last monitor is a 27-inch Asus VE20. Uh, last monitor is an Asus 27-inch. It's a VE278H. Doesn't have as good, as, a, uh, as good of a viewing angle as the other ones, but it's just another 1080p monitor for the side to throw stuff on. And this monitor could be anything. I don't care about it. Um, the, I actually like the stand better than the monitor, but it's it's there and it does the trick. Get a little Velcro on top in case I want to stick a, another webcam or something. I don't know. And as far as my peripherals go, I'm using all of our Finnick products here. We've got one of our Finnick Burning Earth desk mats, and then I'm using this Finnick Standard Issue mouse with a 3310 sensor, which is still my favorite sensor. The only difference in that one really in the 3360 is if you want to like slam it on the desk and do that stuff, you know, like let me just, uh, like if you want to do this nonsense, well, I say nonsense, but some of you love to play that way. 
it's not quite as good as the 3360 for that, but just for regular gaming, it's great. And I also took the bottom off and took out the weights. There's about 22 grams of the weights in there, so I can make it around 90 grams. Move a little faster, but it's up to you if you want to keep the weights in there or not. We also offer a service now. If you uh, head over to EpicPants.com, when you're actually buying the mouse, you can go ahead and click on the mouse, and then down here on the bottom, you can say, remove the weights for me, and I'll, I'll do the hard labor for you for only $6.66. And then I'll put the uh, the feet back on there correctly so that they're not going to come off. So that's the thing we offer there. And then for the keyboard, we've got our water-resistant mother membrane keyboard. So yeah, I'm using a membrane keyboard, believe it or not. And I like it a lot for streaming because it's quieter than even a silenced red switch mechanical keyboard. It's really quiet. And I was really picky when I went over to China looking for a keyboard because I, I wanted to start with a membrane keyboard mainly because I thought it would be quiet for streaming. That's literally why I started uh, and I didn't want any nonsense with like a gazillion RGB colors. We have seven colors that you can toggle between by holding function and pressing tab. It's got a nice poppy feel for a membrane keyboard. For some of you guys are not going to argue that it will not you know compete with a much 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 more expensive mechanical but it is going to be quieter so there's a give and take there. I mean hell I like it and I've also brought the price down to $34.99 for you guys so when you grab that you're happy. We make a couple bucks and uh, everything's wonderful. Next up, let's take a look at this little webcam over here. This is a Logitech C920. I'm mainly only using this as our tea or coffee cam. So if you've seen any of the streams, uh, the Logitech C920 running at 1080p is the webcam that I'm using on the side just to pour my tea, literally. And sometimes if I want to show something off on the desk here, I can just like, oh, here's some, you know, here's some stuff right here. Check this out. So it's a nice little handy uh, secondary camera to have on stream. I really love having a secondary camera. I'm not sure if I'll be able to go back to only having one camera after this. So Logitech C920, I had one of those. If you've got any other ones, you know, it's whatever. But this is also, Logitech C920 is also good enough to be a primary camera. So there's that. Oh, there's another option for these little pancake lights. You know, up to you. There's a bunch of different options online, but I really like the, the quality of the Elgato, so I'm sticking with those. And I'm sure you've seen that Stream Deck on my desk. So I use that thing a lot. I don't think I'd be able to stream without it. It's If you haven't seen what a Stream Deck is, it essentially works with Open Broadcaster and a number of other, of other programs. It even works with these Elgato key lights right here, so you can toggle them on and off. Uh, and there is a ton of stuff that you can add as far as functionality goes. I only use it mainly for Open Broadcaster to change between my different scenes and stuff like this, and then like this, and then like this. Just change them between all these different scenes. And oh, yes, I'm using my... There we go. I'm using right back there. See, just it's really handy. And if I wanted to do some overlays, I could do that. You know, like I could put soon on the screen. So all this is toggled right here with my Stream Deck. You can even set it up to um, you know toggle animated uh, images or videos or whatever. So would not be able to stream without that. Very important. Now I got a lot of controllers here. So right now, uh, recently I played a little bit of. Uh, Twilight Princess, uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD with my emulator, and um, I wanted to be able to have the original experience. I decided to go with my GameCube controller, and I've got a whole bunch of these. I've got some original GameCube controllers, and uh, the one that just feels the best because it's you know more new is I've got the Smash Brothers controller here. Never used it to play Smash Brothers, but it works really, really well with this, and then I'm using uh, one of these that's USB to plug into the computer so that I can uh, you know have my GameCube controller working with my PC works great and you know every now and then I do like to play Wii games and stuff so I've got the Wii sensor bar that I can stick on top it fell behind you'll see it there behind the uh, you know behind the the monitor but it, it's it's there and this is just a USB I mean it's really simple you could you could get these things that plug in or you should use batteries or whatever there's just a couple LEDs in there and if you're short on LEDs you can just use a couple candles but I'll say one thing if you're gonna be doing this and you're gonna be streaming or playing games on the computer like Wii games emulating them on the computer scoot your chair back the sensor bar and the Wii remote is not made for you to sit close it, it won't pick it up you need to be back like three or four feet so just know that you'll be very frustrated if you're trying to do stuff up close because it's gonna be confused so right now I'm wearing earbuds because I like to be able to headbang and stuff and then it's hard to headbang with headphones on it just doesn't work so you know that's literally why I'm wearing earbuds because I normally would game with a set of open pack headphones. But I love the sound of these Austri KCO6 uh, earbuds. I discovered these things. It's a Chinese brand and they make in-ear monitors that have a very crystal clear 
uh, sound profile, almost a flat frequency response curve in my opinion. Uh, some of you will think it doesn't have quite enough bass, but you can get the KCO9s or the KCO7s. They have a little more bass. Uh, but for the money, for $57.99, I don't think there's uh, many other earbuds that can come close to the quality you get with these Austri earbuds. You'll be paying like, you know, over $100 for something similar in my opinion. So there's that. And then when it comes to my headphones, I use the Grado Prestige series. It's the SR325. And uh, these are handmade in Brooklyn. They look like something a hipster would wear and they sound amazing. Like they sound really good. They're probably the most open back pair of headphones I sound and they, they are tuned perfectly for like acoustic music, but also rock and roll. These things are going to give you more spatial awareness than virtually any of those surround sound heads, head headphones or anything like that. But I love these and I have them hanging under my desk on one of these, the Anchor by uh, Elevation Lab. And I bought one of these, it worked great, I ended up buying like six more and putting them on like almost all of my desks. They're just a really adhesive uh, little sticker you peel off and then put it on the bottom of your desk and you can hang a couple different headphones. I've also got like, oh, 20 feet of cable like wound up and hanging on the other side of this thing. So it can hold a you know, decent bit of weight. And I love being able to just hang my headphones underneath the desk like that. Gets it out of the way, it's nice. And my speakers, how about some Altec Lansing ACS340? <laughs> Yep, these are so old and they still sound, in my opinion, really good. They've got a tiny little bass subwoofer in the floor. But for just general use at your computer, I think they sound awesome. I've got no complaints. I didn't have enough room to put any of my Mackie. I've got, I've got some Mackie CR3s, but I didn't have enough room for those. And I didn't have a subwoofer. So this gave me a subwoofer and plenty of room. And I'm not going to be doing any like music editing here with speakers. So... This is great when I want to just unplug my headphones and chill out and listen to some music or something. They sound, for the money, unbelievably good, but they're not, you know, they're not made anymore. If you can find them, they're some of the best Altec Lansing has, has made in that price range. Let's talk about this mic stand right here. Let me check this action. This is it right here. This is the 4Max Caster. This is a heavy duty mic stand and it comes with the cable pre-routed through it. It is high quality, made of aluminum. It's got a really solid desk mount that actually allows you to raise the Thormax uh, caster completely out of the desk mount without removing the desk mount. So if you wanted to pick it up or whatever and mess with it, it's very easy. Um, it's, got a, um, it's got a thread so you can just screw your uh, microphone on there. And it comes with several different adapters right here in the box, as you can see. Different, also different sizes. Of, of as far as the screw mount goes, you've got several different sizes here, so it'll accommodate all the different mics you can think of out there. And this one comes with uh, micro and mini USB adapters, uh, but no USB type B adapter for some of the, you know, different ones out there on the market that have like a big one of the type B plugs. But, you know, it's got type C as well in there, so you can hook it up to all those things except for type B, which kind of made me sad. I wanted to use my Samson mic but ended up using the Blue Yeti with that crazy hairdo, the Don King hairdo. Now, this is a really stiff mic arm. It's too stiff to use the lightweight microphone. And you can also get this in XLR flavor if you want to use an XLR mic and a mixer and all that stuff. It comes with two different flavors. It's so heavy that if you put a regular mic on there, um, it, it won't even lock into place. It'll just go back up on its own. Like, it's, it's really ridiculous. It's... The springs are so tight that it's almost a slingshot, so I wouldn't recommend it unless you're using a microphone that's at least like as heavy as a Blue Yeti. All right, now looking across the desk here, so the, my monitor on the right, it's on this really ornate box, and there may be some secret things inside that box, some awesome velvet and stuff. This is actually a gift from Deep Cool, so thanks very much, Deep Cool. But on the inside there, there was a bunch of oolong tea. And different, I think it's what it was in there. I'm not 100% sure, but one time they gave us oolong tea. I think that's what was in there. But anyway, it's an awesome box, and I've used it as a stand to raise up the monitor a little bit. And then on top of that, you can see my sigil sticker from John Romero's store. John Romero uh, was actually nice enough to send that to me uh, when he sent over the his wallet here. Got, this is his wallet. It's pretty freaking sweet. There we go. Get that light in there. Just to prove it's John Romero's wallet. Beside that, we've got... Oh, look at our pain elemental. That is Samantha, the pain elemental. Why does everybody always think pain, pain elementals are all dudes? That's Samantha, the pain elemental, who happens to be in love with my cacodemon on the other uh, side of the desktop. And there you can see some old id characters that you might be familiar with right around there if you're keen to know and things about guys. And then you'll see this lovely mug right here on the desk, the tea cam. We have that available for purchase. So you can grab your own. 
Hail coffee drink Satan mug. Satan. By the way, you'll notice a lot of Satan stuff everywhere. But uh, I don't believe in Satan, just so you know. I just don't remember the store. I'll link. I'll make sure I'll link all these things. So if you wanted to grab some of these cool stickers that you saw uh, in this video, you can. You see all these LED uh, candles sitting around? Much safer. Oh yeah, yeah it burns. Uh, looks real. I thought it was real. Uh, did you think it was real? Me too. So anyway, I grabbed those on Banggood. I love using uh, sites like Banggood and AliExpress to grab stuff like this because it's you know it's pretty cheap shipping and you can get some stuff that's hard to find on amazon you can find this stuff on amazon now but when i got it it wasn't really a big deal and i also have these that have this awesome like it's, it's actual real wax you can see there really cool looking let me just turn this off so you can really see the the details stop doing that you son of a see there the wax on the side looks really cool in my opinion it's all fake everything's fake and uh, providing all this fog Fog, smoke, mist, machine, stage effect, disco, DJ, party, Christmas with remote control, US plug. And as you can see here, we have our 400 watt fog, smoke, mist, machine, stage effect, disco, DJ, party, Christmas with remote control, US plug. Oh, I love this thing so much. And I have filled it up with the fog juice one time and I've been streaming for like months now, just abusing that fog button, just all the time abusing this fog button. Yes. Bask in this with me. On the other side of the desk over there, I've got a um, headphone amp that I'm using for my Grados. I should just mention it. It's a uh, mono price amp that I don't think you can get anymore, but uh, my Mayflower Electronics is downstairs. And I don't have another one to bring up here, so you make do with what you got, right? Now, the computer that I'm using for this uh, streaming rig is mainly a dev rig. It's beefy and ridiculous. Uh, it only has an RTX 2070 from EG EVGA. It's a beastly card. But that's, that's the least of this system. It's got 64 gigabytes of DDR4 from Patriot running at 3400 megahertz. Actually 3600 megahertz, I think. And then uh, we have the ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming X motherboard. We've got a 4 terabyte M.2 in here from Sabrent. We've got a 1 terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 M.2 from Sabrent. Uh, and that one's blazing fast. The other one's blazing large. And then last but not least, just a little... 16 core AMD 3950X CPU. So I needed all that because I'm doing all this stuff and streaming at the same time as I'm using the Unreal Engine to do some really ridiculous stuff uh, because our game world is, is probably too big. We're going to need to shrink it down a little bit. So that's what's going on. If you didn't know that I stream, you need to head over to Twitch and subscribe to Midnight Dojo, all one word. Just you know, the link's in the top of the description, so go over there and subscribe to Midnight Dojo. Do it. Now, I've got that in the floor. I'm not someone who likes to put my PCs on the desk, but I don't like to put them right on the floor. I usually put them on a little riser or something. And I've actually got a, a like a plant stand. You can't see it. It's really dark down there, but it's like a, a stand that's meant to put like a potted plant on. And then I used uh, a whole bunch of twist ties and just tied them all together to make a giant string that went all the way around it so that I could string a power strip on there. Now, here's what I do. I've got lamps around the, this room, right? And I will run cords to plug all the lamps into a power strip so that I can just come in and smack one power strip on and all the lamps will come on. So I don't have to run around like trying to fiddle with all the... This, this is me tweaking all the lamps nipples. The Deus Ex poster on the wall keeps curling up and I'm leaving it that way in this video so that while I'm watching it I will remember or while I'm editing this I will remember to order the correct sized frame for that stupid thing so this curl is punishment for you but it's also punishment for me to remember to order a frame and this may not seem important because it's not an over-the-top sponsored gaming racing chair but I'm very persnickety about my chairs this is a steel case criterion and these are normally like a thousand bucks if you get them new, but I usually get them for like 30 to a hundred dollars used because a lot of executive type people will buy like a whole bunch of these for their offices. And then when they go out of business or something, or when they're upgrading to the another one because uh, somebody ate saltine crackers in their chair and got crumbs on it, well, they'll sell them and you can find them all the time. So I'll go meet somebody and, and grab this, but I like it because it's one of the only chairs, if not the only chair, it gives my back the proper support, which feels really good. It's also uh, made for, you know, taller people. I'm 194 centimeters, so this works great for me. And everything can be adjusted from the, the arms down to the butt pad and the back, and just every part of it can be raised or lowered or, you know, that's pivotal tilting and swiveting and all that stuff. It, you can do a lot with this chair. So I've got one of these at every station in the house here. I've got one 
at my other computer and also one sitting uh, in the garage by where I do the Epic Pants order fulfillment. Oh! It gets hot in here, I should mention, or, you know, like it, it, it can get pretty warm in here. So check this little collection. I got these Easy Act fans. Oh yeah, they're good. If it gets too hot, I should put one of the pull one of these little Easy Act fans out right here. Yeah, look at that. Nice and handy for, for you know, like so my last oh no, there's glitter on the box. What bastards put Jesus! I can't believe those bastards put glitter on their box. So anyway, there's the uh, Easy Act fan. Metal construction, which I like. And this is going to be cool for your desk, especially when it's hot, because it's you know it's got the USB. You don't have to worry about plugging it in; it just works with USB. And on the back over here, got your power on and off button right there. So I've I've been grabbing some of this Easy Act stuff for a while because I found that the ones I've purchased in the past have worked. And uh, hopefully this stuff will be no different. I almost forgot to pull it out of the box, but doing this video, I was like, oh yeah, my Easy Act stuff. I got to get that and finally hook it up so I don't burn my feet. That's pretty much it. Let me know what you think of the uh, streaming area. Let me know if you want to see a video on all the stuff on the side, everything from the coffee maker to the video games to the the whiskey, I don't know, the, the sunglasses, the hidden bits of hentai over there in the Dungeons & Dragons second edition. I started to mention whiskey, and now I'm drunk. I don't know. Anyway, that's it. Head over to fans.com. Get yourself a t-shirt. Get yourself... One of these mice or something, you know, you know what to do. I'll see you guys in the comments.